Luke chapter 11 from verse 1. Now it came to pass as he, Jesus, was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I welcome you to this special word from the Lord to you. I am speaking on the heavenly life is for all who will believe today. I want to remind us that the will of God was for man to be restored to God's image and likeness even today. God created man in his image and likeness in the beginning due to sin that life was lost. Adam lived and enjoyed the heaven on earth. He lived the heavenly life here on earth in Eden until sin came and man lost that life. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came and lived in heaven on earth here on earth until the day he bore our sins in his own body on the tree, was crucified, died and was buried, and eventually rose from the dead on the third day. Jesus Christ has done all that is necessary and required for man to be restored to God's image and likeness. And hear me and hear this. There is no one that is redeemed from sin and restored to righteousness, that is restored to God's image and likeness, that is to be permitted to suffer here on earth. Suffering is hell on earth. For you to live and suffer here on earth is suffering hell on earth. In John chapter 3 and verse 13, Jesus said, No man has ever gone up to heaven except he, the Son of God, who came down from heaven, who also here on earth lived in heaven on earth. He said to us, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must he, the Son of God, be lifted up, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, eternal life and the everlasting life, though they appear to be the same, are not actually the same. Eternal life means having God's divine nature. Everlasting life means having God's divine nature plus every provision of heaven to sustain that divine nature in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. God wants us to be free from sin. To be free from sickness, to be free from everything that came upon man as a result of sin. When you have every divine provision of heaven here on earth, you enjoy everlasting life. Life that lasts forever. Listen, the will of God is for you to live and enjoy heaven on earth. And that is why we're talking about the heavenly life. The question is, what is the heavenly life? Number one, the heavenly life is having the life of God in you now. The heavenly life is having the life of God in you now. If you are born again, you have eternal life, God's divine nature in you right now. Peter told us in his epistle, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, his divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. That's one. And he has brought us to where we can enjoy through knowledge his peace and his grace and every other benefit. He has given to us great and precious promises that by this, that's his word, we might become partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption which is in the world through loss. 
In First Peter 1 and verse 23, I will say we are born again through the incorruptible seed, which is the, love of, the word of God, which lives and abides forever. When you are born again, you see, God gives you his divine nature. You become incorruptible. You have God's nature. Now, to sustain that nature, God gives you all things that pertains to life and godliness. That is what you need to enjoy everlasting life. So, when you have eternal life, you have God's life. We have everlasting life. You have God's life sustained with God's divine provisions to keep you, you know, stayed in that life for as long as you live. Hallelujah. In other words, you begin to enjoy the heavenly life here on earth. And that is God's will for everyone. God wants you to enjoy the heavenly life. And I'm praying to God I God will help you to see that. What is the heavenly life? It is having the life of God like living, it is living the life of God like him now. Remember the first one is having the life of God in you right now. Number two, it is living the life of God like him here on earth. When you live like God, you operate in his class. In Philippians 2 and verse 13, the Bible says, It is God who is at work in you and I, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When God can will and live out his will in us, we are living the heavenly life now. God, our Father, is in heaven. And anywhere he manifests himself, you see heaven in that place. What is the heavenly life? Number three, it is dominating over all evils like God now. It is dominating over all evils, dominating over sin, over Satan, over the flesh, over sickness, over disease, over poverty, over selfishness, over wickedness, over everything that is evil. When you dominate or have dominion over all these evils like God now here on earth you are living the heavenly life listen to me the will of God is for you to live and enjoy this kind of life right now what is the heavenly life for it number four it is doing good to all without hindrances when you live the life that that make you do good that can help you to do good to all without hindrances you are living the heavenly life in heaven there is no hindrance Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you have been all sufficiency in all things, spiritual and body. You can abound to every good work. When you have all sufficiency in all things to abound to every good work, you are living the heavenly life now. Who can live this heavenly life? Number one, all of God's children. Where we read in Luke chapter 11 verse 2. He said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, let your name be honored, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come, bring heaven to this earth. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven. That is, let all that is happening in heaven now happen here on earth now. When everything happening in heaven happens here on earth now, because we are here now, we live and enjoy the heavenly life now. So, this is God's will for all of God's children. When you live without being afraid of what to eat tomorrow, nobody is sowing any seed in heaven. Nobody is planting anything in heaven, but there's nobody in heaven that will not eat every day. When you don't have any care of any kind, when you live your life without care, what to eat, what to wear, where to sleep, how to pay your bills, you are living and enjoying heavenly life. When you live without any care, in First Peter 5, Verse 7 says, cast all your cares upon you for I care for you. When you live your life without any care, you don't bother about sin, you don't bother about sickness, you don't bother about disease, no lack. You are not bothered about any problem. You are living the heavenly life. Who can live this life? First, the children of God. Those who are born again. Those who are born of God. Those who have received Christ into their life as Lord and Savior. Those who have been made Christ's joint heir, they will live this kind of life. Number two, all heavenly citizens, all heavenly citizens. In Philippians 3 verse 20, we are people from heaven. We are heavenly citizens. That's what God says. Colossians 1 verse 13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into his kingdom. In this kingdom, we live in heaven on earth. Colossians 3, 1 and 2, if you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Set your mind, your affections, your love on things which are above. 
That is what you are to do. You, you think heavenly thoughts. You, lead, you speak heavenly words. You do heavenly things. You live heavenly life. That is God's will. All heavenly citizens are to live the heavenly life. Totally every ambassador of Christ who is here on his living mission, you are to live that life. Every ambassador of every nation, sent to any nation, does not depend on the nation where he is sent to. Depends on his nation for everything. And is mandated, I put it that way, to live, to demonstrate and to showcase all his nation is about. When we are ambassadors of Christ, sent into the world to do all Christ did, we are giving all he is giving. And I tell you from my heart, whatever God gave to Christ, he has given to us everything. Right now, if you are a child of God, you have become a citizen of him because you are mature enough, then you have become his ambassador sending his mission. Listen, all you are looking for, you don't need to look for them. God will give them to you. Divine protection will be yours. Divine immunity. Everything heaven can offer, can afford, can give, all of them are supposed to be yours, and they will be yours. The heavenly life is the only life we are called to live as God's children. God has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has translated us into his kingdom for one purpose, so that we can live this life. My prayer for you is that from today, you will begin to live this heavenly life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.